everybody. I'm going to do a video series here for making holsters. And this is my first one that I'm going to be doing and I've, you know, gained a lot of information here and there on making leather holsters. So I'm going to go at it and see what we get. And I am first and foremost a complete novice when it comes to leather work. So I'm just going to go through this step by step and see what we get. This is going to be long-winded. For those of you who have watched my videos, you know, I try to cover every aspect of everything. So any people that are, you know, advanced in the leather craft or working with leather, you know, you might want to tune out or skip ahead. So I'm going to go through it one step at a time. And what I'm going to be doing is making a holster for my Ruger LC9 and my catalyst for this is I wanted a nice leather holster to conceal it but uh, from looking around you know they're about I don't know maybe seventy eighty dollars on up you know for nice leather holsters so I'm gonna see if I can make one and I also have you know a nine millimeter Smith & Wesson you know so with these little bit of investment here I can play around and experiment but I'm gonna go through some of the things that I did purchase and tell you where I got them and rough rough figures I don't have a total cost on this but uh, these three items here which is an edge groover uh, I'm sorry an edge beveler a grooving tool and this is supposed to be an adjustable V gouge I, I assume I picked all three of these up at Harbor Freight for $9.99, knowing full well, uh, based on reviews, that they're not quite good. So I'm going to start with the worst one, which does not even work, which is supposedly this adjustable V gouge. Well, it's not a V, it's more like a U, and by the way it's ground, it, it just does simply does not work, but I don't intend on using this, so get rid of that. The edge beveler, surprisingly enough, does work quite well, but not, not without sharpening it, though. Uh, so to sharpen it, I haven't quite finished. I just kind of did it. I just took a fine diamond, diamond stone, uh, held my finger here, and just worked that edge to try to get the rough grinding marks out. I'll eventually strop this on some leather, leather to get a, a nice keen edge but it does work. So that in its own right is worth the $10 because I think they're about $15 from Tandy. Uh, the other tool is the uh, grooving tool which simply did not work out of the gate and now I absolutely know why but the handle is pretty much all I wanted. Uh, I believe this tool to buy it at Tandy is $20. Obviously I got the whole set for $10 and I did go to Tandy and buy a replacement blade for it and you probably can't pick this up but there's there's a small hole in the replacement blade and that's where the leather actually gets cut and then it rolls out through the hole and the end of the tool from Harbor Freight is nowhere even near the hole it's like they didn't even finish grinding it so now that I know the shape of this tool, I can actually go in and regrind this one. But I just went and bought a blade that I knew would work. I believe it was about seven fifty or eight dollars, and so now I'm eighteen fifty, and I've got two tools that are absolutely going to work for what I want. Uh, to buy these tools individually at uh, Tandy, uh, I believe the cost was sixty dollars for these three items. So I've turned that $60 into about $18 plus tax, so I thought that was a pretty good deal. So I'm just going to clear these out of the way, we'll get to the use on these later. The next item that I did buy at Harbor Freight was a stitching awl. I'm not using this for the actual stitching, I'm actually hand stitching these uh, with a uh, cross stitch, I believe is what it's called. Uh, but I bought it just for the handle. And it did come with uh, actually four needles, two bent, two straight, and it came with a large quantity of, uh, I guess they want to call this sinew, but it's really not. It just seems like cotton twine. I'm not going to be using this, but this was $5.99. And 
to pick one up at Tandy, I believe they're twenty dollars. So do your math there. I've saved fourteen bucks on that. Now what I bought this for is this is not a stitching needle that's in it. This is actually a, a diamond shaped awl right here. So I just put it in there and that is how I'm going to pierce my holes on my leather. So just another way to save a little bit of cash. I'm going to try to keep this kind of quick. Uh, I went to uh, Hobby Lobby to buy this overstitch roller and this will all come into play later for those of you who are like me a complete novice I'll explain how to use this but this is the multi-part tool uh, it it does it does your stitch line so you can get equal spacing on your stitches and it has three different rollers for different stitches per inch and you can change them out and it came with a tiny little screwdriver where you can change these off now this was twenty dollars at Hobby Lobby and twenty dollars at Tandy However, if you look on Hobby Lobby's website, you can get a 40% off, <clears throat> excuse me, one item single purchase. So I bought it at Hobby Lobby and got 40% off. So I got this for $13 and change out the door. Not too shabby. So I'll move on to some other items that we're going to be using that I purchased. I did purchase a 10 pack of stitching needles. Uh, these are uh, blunt ended for the most part so they won't really pierce your skin so I did buy those I believe they were three dollars uh, I did buy a, a pack of uh, beeswax for burnishing edges uh, which there are other methods I'm going to experiment with that but I believe I'm going to use beeswax I believe this was four dollars uh, I bought an edge slicker which is just a piece of nylon with a groove cut in it. You can probably use other things. Uh, but it was only $4, so I went ahead and bought that. I bought this creaser folder. I'm not sure exactly what creasing and folding is, but I did buy it for about $4. Uh, it also has an end that comes off of it. But it also has grooves in here where I guess you could use it as an edge slicker. Uh, but I'm going to use this to soften the back edge of the leather and get all the fibers to lay down. We'll get into that later. Uh, one item that I did have that you will need is uh, some waxed braided cord. In my case I'm using braided. It's something I already had on hand for a different project and you'll need to get some of this. I did buy a belt clip for the holster from Tandy. This is not really the style I wanted but that's all they had locally and I didn't want to order something. Uh, I believe it was maybe $2.99, maybe $3.99. And I did buy a small pack of Chicago screws, uh, which is basically a screw together rivet. These are going to be a little bit long, I believe, for what I wanted to use, but they were the shortest ones they had. So those are basically the items that I did purchase. You know, there's going to be other tools involved, and we'll get into those as we go. Uh, now I'm going to get into some other items that I did purchase from there. Uh, I did buy a mahogany die, which is a Feebing's leather die. I believe it was maybe uh, seven or eight dollars. I bought some gum tragacanth. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that properly. I believe it was seven or eight dollars, six or seven dollars. And I also bought some EcoFlow satin sheen for putting a top coat on the leather to protect it. Uh, I'm also going to be using Neat's Foot Oil. I already had some on hand from a project I did a long time ago. So we'll be using some of that. So that's the rundown on the items that I purchased. Like I said, I don't really have a count. I just wanted to give you guys an idea on you know my expenses and everything that I've got here. And we're going to move forward and see if we can make one of these holsters.